So they will never see you beyond your transness. They see you as a trans body and not in a positive way. Okay, so a man being so attracted to you, wanting to sleep with your body, is somehow a bad thing? What is a trans chaser? The term chaser is predominantly used to describe cisgender men who are solely sexually interested in trans women, but it's sometimes used to refer to those interested in trans men as well. Being labeled as a chaser is not a positive thing, and trans activists will label anyone who just shows a little bit of interest in trans people as a chaser, even the ones who want long-term relationships. Let's talk about chasers. A chaser is someone who fetishizes trans people. They are obsessed with trans people. They get off on the idea of being with trans people. They look at trans people as objects for their own gratification. Do you know how sexual attraction works? The point of dating? How sex works? If you want to sleep with someone, you need to be sexually attracted to them. How's that a bad thing? I totally get that assholes exist. I totally understand that these chasers actually exist. And I've heard they don't treat trans women well. But why shame the men who are at ease, are comfortable with being attracted to trans people? The problem I have is trans activists won't distinction between a man who just wants to sleep with a trans woman and not treat her well, and then a man who knows he's attracted to trans women because they're different, and he wants a relationship with them. They can be very affirming at first, and that's kind of how they manipulate you into being in a relationship with you or getting you close to them so that you can give them that gratification. Are they being manipulative though? Or is it yet another term that your community, the trans community, deliberately misuses? I've noticed that people who are really concerned with what stage I'm at in my medical transition, just my medical transition in general, it kind of sets up some red flags for me. People asking me questions about what's in my pants, questions that are similar to that, questions about what's going on up here. I don't know why you want to know so much about my body and my genitals. Right, how is it relevant what you have in between your legs when you're dating and on dating apps. Perhaps they want to know to determine their interest in you. It's like pretending not to understand a vegan's right to know what's in their food. Babe, some people don't like to have meat in their mouths and some people must have meat in their mouths in order to be satisfied. Because generally them knowing that gives them a sense of control that then they can continue to objectify you. But refusing to disclose what's in your pants in a dating scenario is not an attempt to control the situation. Who's really the controlling one, dear? You want to control language, definitions. Trans activists like you hate the fact that some men know what they want, are attracted to, and they own it. It pisses you off because then you can't control the men. You love, your community is addicted to controlling others. But here in this case, you can't. If you are trans and you pick up on signs of somebody being a chaser, there's lots of other signs and I literally can't list them all. Having a greed kink with a B at the front of it is like one of them. Especially if you're like an AFAB trans mask or trans man or non-binary person. Let me translate. If you're a woman, so a breeding fetish means being strongly attracted to the idea of impregnation. But you know what? Gay men can also have a breeding kink. I know it sounds weird, but it is a thing. It's called mpreg, mpreg fetish, or male pregnancy. It means you finish the business inside instead of outside. Trying to keep it YouTube friendly here. Oh, and without protection. I know I don't need to get into this, but a breeding kink is not really a fetish, but rather a natural sexual instinct. Wanting to breed or be bred is the default desire. The point of sex is to reproduce. What a big surprise, trans activists trying to shame biology and nature. The point is that chasers are very dangerous. Chasers can objectify you to a certain point where they make you feel safe, but then if you like get mad at that objectification or you start picking up on it or something like that, it can become a very dangerous situation very fast because ultimately they do not see your transness as valid. They see it as something for themselves that they can benefit from. Oh, so it's not actually dangerous, like physically dangerous to object? you think it would be psychologically harmful if a man wants to date you, but not trans ideology. The trans cult preaches all the time, affirm us, affirm us, date us, date us. So then trans attracted men do that and you love it. But after a while, you out of nowhere decide to get offended by the same affirmation. According to you, the men are too attracted to you being trans. You believe it's problematic for men to be attracted to trans bodies. You basically want men to ignore your body and only focus on your gender identity, which is all up in your head and can change whenever you feel like it. If you want to date or have casual sex, you need to pursue the people who are specifically attracted to your body type because it's different. Toxic and manipulative men exist.
Of course they do. But men are not toxic for not affirming your spur of the moment delusions. So they will never see you beyond your transness. They see you as a trans body and not in a positive way. Okay, so a man being so attracted to you, wanting to sleep with your body, is somehow a bad thing? But I see what's going on. You don't care about this stuff. You don't care about sex and dating. Your approach to dating seems focused on evaluating people, especially men, for signs of transphobia rather than building meaningful connections. You deep down, or maybe not so deep down, hope they're transphobic so you can act like the victim and get validation from a bunch of anonymous profiles on Reddit and TikTok. Even when men are not being transphobic, you lie about it because woke activists like you always want something to complain about. A chaser is someone who uses certain people to satisfy a sexual fetish. Oh my God, how dare they? Calm down, Kourtney Kardashian. Did you tell your voice training teacher that you wanted to sound like her or something? How else would you describe dating or sex? Sleeping with people for their own sexual gratification. Well, if that's not the goal, wouldn't it be the R word? This whole thing is also about activists trying to control how people are attracted to trans people. They believe you can be attracted to trans people in a wrong way. Look, if this conversation was only about the idiots, the assholes who don't treat trans women well, I get it and I get why activists are upset, but I don't trust these people being the ones gatekeeping who's an asshole and only see trans women as a fetish. And then the men and women who wanna date trans people because they like it and they could also be in a relationship with them. I don't trust the activists to be the gatekeepers. As I said, they have a track record of deliberately misusing terms, simple terms. Chasers out there or fans, supporters, people that like trans women and are attracted to trans women more so than cisgender women. Why? 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 Is it because of our confidence, things that we've been through, our sheer tenacity and willfulness of truly being our authentic selves? Or does the fact that we were born male and transitioned to female turn you on? Are you into the whole kind of ideology of like cross-dresser, man that dresses up as a woman? Basically a woman with a penal shaft. How is being attracted to a cross-dresser or a trans woman an ideology? What are you talking about? And please explain to me why it's a problem that men are attracted to you. As you already know, you can't be attracted, sexually attracted to personality traits. Stop making sexual attraction so goddamn complicated. Okay, so if you're sexually attracted to trans people, good for you. I truly hope you find someone. And my advice to you is stop listening to trans activists. They don't know what they're talking about. According to them, you as a non-trans person or as a chaser will never be good enough. You can always do better. You can always be more trans friendly and they can call you transphobic at any time. No one is safe. I am so sick of all their lies, but I have the feeling that I'm not the only one who can see through their BS and their lies. Thank you all for watching this video. If you want to see more content like this, remember to hit subscribe and the notification bell. If you want to support me and my channel, you can become a member or I have my PayPal link in the description down below. Remember to follow me on social media. I love you and I cannot wait to see you in the comments. Peace out.